A lot of things I could say this morning. I don't believe all of what you heard just a few minutes ago. I'm sick and tired of ego trippers and champions. I'm sick of them. We got we got one champion and they crucified him. Praise God. I know a few more that need to be crucified. Hallelujah. Now, I got a lot of preaching to do and a short time to do it. I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you what I think of these meetings. They've had four of them. And I've been to all four of them. That ought to, that ought to speak louder than anything else. I'll come whether I'm preaching or not. Hallelujah. Now... Uh, I could go on and say that uh, you ever drive down a, a road for a long way and you didn't see any road sign and you begin to wonder if maybe you was on the wrong road and you, you got a little apprehensive. Oh, Lord, throw that dictionary away. You got a little apprehensive, you know, and, and you begin to wonder, hey, am I really on the right road? And then all of a sudden you look up and you see the road sign and you say, man, that's it. I'm on it. Now that's the way these PSR meetings are. Sometimes you get to wondering if you're on the right road or not. And uh, sometimes when there's not too much traffic out there, uh, you begin to wonder if you're the only one driving. But then you get into these PSR meetings and you hear that certain sound Oh, I heard it last night. I heard it last night. Praise God, praise God. Now, you forgive me this morning. I, I, I wish I could do it different. I wish I could be kind and sweet and gentle and smooth. And I, I wish I could, but when, when you asked me, you knew what you was going to get. So, you, you might just well, we might just well relax and, and have it together. Praise God. Now I'm feeling good and I got a short time to do what I'm doing. I, I don't want to take up anybody else's time. So let's get into it this morning. 18th chapter of 1 Kings, if you'll stand in honor to the reading of the Word of God. I can't preach with my coat on, can't preach with it off or on. But I have more fun with it off. Praise God. First. 1 Kings chapter 18. It's good to have the prettiest woman in the world with me this morning. You say, I don't think she is. Well, I don't want you to think she is. If you thought she was, you might be giving me trouble. But it's good to have her with me this morning. Reading from 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 1, And it came to pass after many days that the word of the Lord came to Elijah, in the third year, saying, Go, shew thyself unto Ahab, and I will send rain upon the earth. Verse 17, And it came to pass, when Ahab saw Elijah, that Ahab said unto him, Art thou he that troubleth Israel? And he answered, I have not troubled Israel, but thou and thy father's house, in that ye have forsaken the commandments of the Lord, and hast followed Balaam. Now therefore send and gather to me all Israel unto Mount Carmel, and the prophets of Baal four hundred and fifty, prophets of Groves four hundred, which eat at Jezebel's table. So Ahab sent all the children of Israel, gathered the prophets together unto Mount Carmel. Verse 27, And it came to pass at noon that Elijah mocked him and said, Cry aloud, for he is a god, either he's talking or he's pursuing, or he's in a journey, or peradventure he sleepeth and must be awake. And they cried aloud and cut themselves after their manner with knives and lances, till the blood gushed out upon them. And verse 36, And it came to pass at the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice that Elijah the prophet came near and said, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and of Israel, let it be known this day, that thou art God in Israel, and that I am thy servant, that I have done all these things at thy word. Hear me, O Lord, hear me, 
that the people may know that thou art the Lord God, and that thou hast turned their heart back again, and the fire of the Lord fell, consumed the burnt sacrifice and the wood and the stones and the dust, and licked up the water that was in the trench. Now, you may be seated. There seem to be two trains of thought here this morning. Uh, in that day when uh, Elijah met Ahab, and uh, there uh, seemed to be a problem. There had been three and a half years of drought in Israel. The entire country was stirred. Their hearts were prepared for the preaching of the Word of God. And uh, old Elijah had been off hiding himself. Uh, God had specifically directed him to go to the brook Cherith, and God nourished and kept him for a while. And uh, then over to the widow's house where uh, he survived the drought somehow by faith in the Word of God. Now, I'm going to preach this morning on revival and faith, but it's going to take me a little while to get there. So you bear with me. I'm going to preach on faith and revival. But give me a little time to get there. I want to lay a foundation for it. And old Elijah the prophet was off there uh, hiding. And uh, finally God said, Okay, Elijah, stand up now and go and show yourself to Ahab. And of course Elijah Elijah came and uh, he, he got up off the back of his lap. And... Uh, uh, he, he walked out there to show himself uh, to Ahab. And, and of course, uh, uh, when the two of them met, uh, met I, 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 I can see that smooth, soft, uh, well-manicured and coffered Ahab uh, with his smooth, oily uh, operation. And uh, I can see that old, white-headed, uh, eyes-flashing uh, Elijah walk up there and there, there was a personality clash from the word go. They just didn't mix together. And uh, uh, Elijah said, you've been looking for me, man. You don't mind if I preach in street language, do you? He said, you've been looking for me, man. Now, here I is. Here I am, you know. And, and i got to watch that. I mean, uh, praise God. There's not, there's, not, there's not too many of us here this morning. Praise God. And, uh, uh, oh, Ahab looked at him and he said, uh, he said, are you he that troubleth Israel? And, and Elijah, oh, he, he come up, he, he bristled like a junkyard dog. He said, he said, hey man, it's not me that's troubling Israel. He said, it's you that's troubling Israel. Ah, Lord, we got two trains of thought that are circulating in our midst this morning. Now, we've got a problem. I want you to know, I said, we've got a problem. And it's called lack of revival. We've got a drought for the hearing of the Word of God and a drought that the Spirit of God is not being poured out. There is a problem this morning. And there's a group of people that are preaching, if we're ever going to have revival, we're going to have to lay aside these old landmarks uh, and we're going to have to have revival. We're going to have to forget these old holiness concepts. But old Elijah was a hard-nosed, radical, conservative preacher that believed in holiness. Hey, they'll try to tell us that we're trouble in Israel. They'll say, you narrow-minded, hard-nosed, conservative radicals, you're trouble in Israel. Hey, it's not us that's trouble in Israel. It's them that's a trouble in Israel. My God, I don't know whether I dare preach this this morning or not. But not long ago, I got to preach and I said, Will the real United Pentecostals please stand up? I believe it's time that the real Pentecostals stand up. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Ah, sit down, sit down. That's the way I do it at home. 
at home, I say, sit down and shut up. Then I won't say that. Now, I believe it's time to go and show yourself to Ahab. I'm persuaded to believe this morning that the overwhelming majority of the men in this constituency are strong men. And some of them are out there holding between two opinions. <laughs> now, some of you closet conservatives need to come out of the closet and stand up. And start telling people what you really are. Hey, get my manual out of that book. I'm going to tell you what the real Pentecostals, the real United Pentecostals really are. Page 22. Read what I've got circled there. The basic and fundamental doctrine of this organization. The basic and fundamental doctrine of the real United Pentecostal is... Shall be. Shall be. The Bible standard. The Bible standard. The, the Bible, Bible standard. standard. Yeah. A full salvation. Yes. The Bible standard of full salvation. That's the real United Pentecostal Church. Yes. Read it. Which is repentance. Which is repentance. Baptism and water. In Jesus' name. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name Christ. of Jesus. For the remission of sin. For the remission of sin. And the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Of the Holy Ghost. Speaking in tongues. Speaking in tongues. As the Spirit gives out to As the Spirit gives out it. If you don't believe that, get out. Get out. Get out. If you don't believe it, get out. Start your own organization. Call it the United Card Carrying Charismatics. It's your fault. Quit hypocrite. Get out. Hey, let me tell you something, honey. If it ever comes to a court of law, we can't prove to a worldly carnal judge that we are the United Pentecostal Church. John said, they went out from us because they were not of us. Some of them never did believe it. And some of them used to believe it and built strong churches preaching what I'm preaching today. But they don't preach it any longer. If I didn't believe our fundamental doctrine, I'd get out. Quit hypocrite. Quit coming and sitting spots on our feast. Clouds without rain. Getting quiet in here now. Then, there's some more. Now, I know where I'm headed now. I'm headed for a revival and faith. But you've got to lay a groundwork. You've got to lay a foundation for a real revival. 
Now, the Muslims are having a revival. The witches and Satanists are having a revival. There is a revival of fundamental denominational religion. Fellow well. There's a revival of that. But in the midst of it, there's a real revival. In the midst of it is a real revival. I'm going to preach a little while. Will the real United Pentecostal please stand up and go and show yourself to Ahab? God said, if you'll do it, I'll send the rain. Now, we've already got the fire. I said, we've already got the fire. Now we need the rain. Now, some of us are getting the rain, and some are not. I'm going to preach about that after a while. Now, Elijah stepped out there. The Baal boys, they'd been, they'd been cutting and dancing and crusading and programming. And a videoing. And a doing their thing. And Elijah said, well, why isn't it happening now? Go on. You've been a videoing and a programming and a crusading. How come it hasn't happened yet? You can't even get the fire down, let alone the rain to fall. And pretty soon Elijah said, now, get out of my way. I'd like to say that this morning. Let the loose liberal charismatics get out of our way and let us show them how to really have a revival. While I'm on it, give me page 24. I want to draw you a picture of the real United Pentecostal Church. Read what I've got circled, uh, Brother Bo. Lord, he reads in a smooth, nice voice, doesn't he? We wholeheartedly <laughs> disapprove. That's a lot of their problem. They're not, it ain't in their heart. Uh-huh. I hear you. Let me tell you something, you saints. You can do what the preacher says and be saved. Yeah. Just do it because the preacher says so and you'll be saved. But my Lord, if you ever really get it in your heart, it wouldn't matter if the preacher died. You're going to live it anyhow if you really get it in your heart. Paul said, I didn't get this from a man. I got it directly from God. Oh, Lord, I, I prayed through in a church full of rings on both hands and tie bars and cuff links and everything else that went with it. God began to convict me of some things. Which brings me to the question, do we all have the same Holy Ghost? How come the Spirit of God can talk to me to shave my mustache off? How come God convicted me of short sleeves and my arms begin to feel naked? Why was it that God convicted me of television and He don't convict some other people? Do we all have the same Holy Ghost?
it said. Now, you can digress and wander. Old preachers never die. They just lose their text and wander. But as long as I can come back and pick it up, now not everybody can come back and pick it up. We wholeheartedly, see, I come back and picked it up. We wholeheartedly disapprove. Disapprove, that's a, my God, if we could get disapprove and recommend out of that book. Mm, praise God. Read. Of our people. Of our people. Indulge. Indulge. In any activity. In any activity. Which are not conducive. No, read on. To good Christianity. Well, tell me what they are now. And godly living. Read. Such as theaters. Such as. Theaters. My Lord. Someday I'm going to preach. <laughs> such as. <laughs> Someday I'm going to preach any such thing. Yeah. You know, the old preacher said to the young one, he said, Son, he said, go ahead and preach against sin, but don't name it. No. A lot of folks will preach holiness, but they don't want to name it. Yeah. But our manual names it. Hey, I said, our manual names it. Such as theaters. Dancing. Ah, Lord, wait a minute. Theaters. Nobody goes to the theater anymore. They bring it in the living room and sit down. Or shove a tape in. But the real United Pentecostal Church is against theaters in the theater or in the living room. We're against it. We don't believe in it. Read. Dances. Dances. Woo. Just change partners. Go on. Mixed bathing. Mixed bathing. Women cutting their hair. My God have mercy. I got to preaching at my camp meeting. And I said, some of the reason you preachers can't make it is you need to go home and pastor your wife and kids. Start with your wife and kids. Young lady in my church, you know, some lips look awfully suspicious. You ever notice that? Some faces look awfully suspicious. I walked up to this little old gal, I said, hey, you got anything on your lips? Oh, no, Brother Lesberg, no, no. Every time I see her now, she starts licking her lips. I, I preached this in my home church. I said, you ladies, look at the lady next to you and look her right in the eye and say, have you got anything on your lips? At camp meeting, I said, what are you waiting for? Do it! I said, you ladies, look one another in the eye and say, have you got anything on your face? Look her in the eye and say, do you cut your hair? Is that too nasty? I believe it's time we need to ask him. Brother Hickman down in Arkansas, he said, some of you preachers that don't have any guts, he said, you ought to go by the store on your way home and buy some chitlins and take them home and eat them and see if you can get some guts somewhere. Now, he said that I didn't. Read on. Tell us what we are. Makeup. Makeup. I covered that. Go on. Any apparel. 
any apparel that immodestly, that immodestly exposes the body. Exposes the body. I got to preach on Sunday morning. You know, there's not too many things that are an abomination to God. A witch and a wizard and a neat chromoser and a homosexual are an abomination to God. That means that God has a special divine hatred for that. And a woman that wears breeches is the same as a witch in the eyes of God. He said it was an abomination. Oh my God, you're not shouting now. You believe it? How many of you believe it? Put your it down. Now to be fair, how many of you don't? My God, we must be unanimous. Or are we? Read on. All worldly sports and uh, amusements. Now somebody, please come and enlighten this poor old ugly, anemic, uncouth preacher. And tell me which ones are godly. It said all worldly sports. Which ones are divinely approved of God? Tell me. Racquetball. Oh my God, don't stone me. Let me tell you something. If you can get the sports out of a black man, and a bunch of my God, oh Lord, now huh? I believe in having patience with new converts. A week ago, Sunday morning, an old boy come in, long hair, mustache, sit on the second row. I didn't know it, but he was mean as a junkyard dog. He'd been to prison, shot twice. I mean, he was mean. I didn't know it. I taught my Sunday school. He sat there. Then he was soaking it up. I got to preaching, and uh, I preached on Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. And I went back and brought him through the Red Sea, and then I went ahead, and I brought that angel down from heaven with that chain that reached out and got a hold of the devil. Oh, I said, I want to see that. I can, I can believe God for that. I, I can believe God that that mighty angel is going to come down from heaven and lay hands on that devil and start wrapping that chain around him. And I want to be there. He's been messing with my mind long enough. But we can't believe God for today. We can believe yesterday and tomorrow. Well... Make a long story short, short, he come back to church that night and in song service, he stood up and he was trying, he was trying to worship. He, he had clapping, he's trying to get his hands up and somebody pushed him out in the aisle and he walked down and in a few minutes he was talking in tongues. I put him in the baptistry. That was Sunday night. Tuesday night, I got his mustache. I believe in being patient with him. I let him go from Sunday to Tuesday. Hey, if your pastor preaches, shave him off, you better do it. And if he don't preach it, somebody ought to shave him off.
Sunday night I got his hair. I said, church, I said, don't he look nice? All he needs is a haircut. It upset him so much he took off and run the aisles. Oh, Lord, I need to go on. Now, I'm going to get into the faith. What time is it? Well, i got time to preach a little faith. Now, separation from the world. You're not going to have a genuine revival till you... Now, now when Peter... Peter just jumped up and said, You listen to me now. They had six months at least. And maybe longer. I'm a wild old preacher out on the banks of the River Jordan. A preaching repent. That was the bunch that was gathered up to Jerusalem. Was that bunch that John had preached to repent? They had had three and a half years of the preaching of Jesus Christ. You give me a man three weeks in Sunday school and three weeks in Bible study, and he's going one way or the other. These people had the foundation of the Word of God. And all they needed was to hear that they could receive the Holy Ghost. And they began to pray through. That crusade had a Bible foundation on the preaching of the Word of God that included repentance and godly living for three and a half or four years of the preaching of the Word of God. Then it happened. Now let me get into faith. Without faith, Hebrews 11 and 6, but without faith, it is impossible to please God. Now, Brother Bo, I was telling him last night, I, I don't know how it happened. I, I, know, I know it's happening and I'm, it's, I'm on a good horse and I'm going to ride it. And I, don't, I don't know. I, hey, I, I've seen good, godly, clean men that believed the message and believed holiness. And I've seen them go to a city and preach their heart out and live and die. Without revival. Any of you ever see that? I mean, good, godly, straight. I mean, gun barrel straight. I'm talking about holiness minded men that believed the message and preached it fearlessly, but it didn't happen. And I got to thinking they prayed and they fasted and they had ability and they had intellect. I don't have either one. They had talent. I don't have much of that either. Talent of making everybody mad at me. If that's a talent. And God spoke to me one day. And He said the missing ingredient is faith. It's faith. And I got to riding that. Now... It takes faith. There, there, there are three dimensions of faith. Number one, it takes faith to be saved. Hey, to, to come to a, an old wooden bench and kneel down and start calling on a God that you have never seen and, and, and asking Him to forgive you sins that you can't remember. It takes faith. You can't repent without faith. And if you tried to get your carnal, finite mind to understand how a man going down in water in Jesus' name, baptized by a God-anointed preacher, and leave all his sins in the water, you've got to have faith to believe that. And you try to get the Holy Ghost without faith, you'll wear your lungs out and all the seekers out and the preacher out. Without faith. It takes faith. Well, I, I could preach an hour on that. Saving faith. 
then there is faith for every day living for God. When it looks like everything's gone wrong, the powers of hell have come against you like a flood. And you stand by faith. It takes faith to live for God. It takes faith to bring you through a trial. When you walk through the valley of despair, you've got to hold on to faith. But then, ah, Lord, that's why Jesus said to him, Oh, you little faith. You little faith. Clay, they were in a storm. I got out on the lake with Elder. He accused me of getting scared. I wasn't. Hey, I've been on a bigger lake than that. I've been in the South Pacific in a typhoon. That was a bigger lake, and the waves was higher, and the wind was stronger. And I was lost. And if somebody had been there to teach me how to pray, I'd have got the Holy Ghost right there. And so nobody there. Nobody there but us sinners. <laughs> and I, I heard strong men calling on God. You know, you know what an atheist is? An atheist is a man that's never been scared enough to pray. I've heard atheists pray. But Jesus said, Oh, you see, I come back and pick it up. Oh, you little faith. Faith. When the trials. Oh, you, you saints know what I, you preachers know what I'm talking about. Faith, just to live for God. It looks like the world's against you and on the job and, 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 and all, all, all around you, you know. It just seems like on every side. I have never fought such a battle in my life the last year and a half that we've been building. I, I have never seen anything like it. In 33 years of walking with God, I have never seen anything like it. I have been in a fight when it seemed like my, I, I, I had a boy... Been with me nine years, my sound man. Backslid and went out into the world. And that boy was like a son to me. He used to come to my house. I said, don't marry that little old gal. He did it anyhow. Six months he come and said, I married the wrong woman, Brother Westberg. I'm going to have to leave. I said, no, no. I said, God, oh, I said, I can't make it out. They walked, both of them. Tendon bar. And she's dancing topless in another bar. I... God, it tore my heart out. Fighting. It takes a fight to live for God. you got to have faith to live for God. But there's another dimension. That's the second dimension. There's a third dimension of faith. I preached out here several years ago on bulldog faith. I'm, 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 going to, I'm, going to, I'm just going to review it a little bit. When I was a boy on the farm, dog poor, <laughs> I won't tell you, you pass the offering plate. I told you how poor I was. But we had a little old bulldog. His name was Penny. He was a Boston bull. He stood about that high with the pulpit at the top as a measure. Had his tail cropped off. Had a white blaze face, little black brown looking dog. And we loved as children to play games with Penny. We'd, we'd, we'd get a toe sack, and the minute you picked it up, all them ears would come straight up. He'd start wagging where his tail should have been. And he'd get a look in his eye. And he growled. I preached this at home. I had a tall black man. Got to stand up in the church and he'd go, Row! and the visitors would all look. And I said, Brother Trent, please, <laughs> please. But that little dog would growl and he'd come, and you flipped that toe sack at him one time, Row! and he had it. You could shake him and he'd brace his feet and sit down and look at you and shake that head. And I can remember slinging him around on that old linoleum kitchen floor with all the cracks in it. 
His toenails sliding on that linoleum. There he'd go. Pretty soon you could pick him up. He'd just hang there and look up at you and growl. I get to slinging him around and around, straight out. He'd just hang out there in the air. And pretty soon the inevitable happened, Brother Bo. He'd wear my arm out. And I let go. And he'd run over in the corner and put that toe sack in the corner and lay down on it. And look at me if I took one step toward him. He Now let me tell you something. It's going to take bulldog faith to get into that third dimension. You've got to lock your teeth into it. And it don't matter how the devil shakes you. It don't matter how he slings you around. You keep a grip on it. You keep a grip on it. You know what's going to happen? Pretty soon, you're going to wear the devil out. You're going to wear him out. You're going to wear him out. And he'll let go. I said, he'll let go. Ain't nobody can walk like us black men. Sit down, sit down. Gabriel Rivera, como estas? Paul, let me clear out here. He's heard me preach that before, right? Don't tell him I preached it again, will you? Now, I'm going to preach about that third dimension of faith. In Africa, in March, I preached a conference in Abishon, Cote d'Ivoire, Ivory Coast, to you that never been there. And don't party a little Francais. I know a little year and a half working in French Morocco as a civilian. But preached on a Sunday night, the last night. I'm going to tell you what happened. You think I was ego tripping. I'm, a, I'm not an ego tripper. I hate an ego tripper. I hate a champion. But the last night, Sunday night, getting ready to preach, about eight, nine hundred people there. And a man screamed and come running up. And he had a baby in his arms. And it had malaria and the fever had rose to such a place that it went into convulsions and that's what they do before they die. We gathered around and prayed for it and while we was praying, the baby died. The baby died. And I'm going to tell you what a great man of faith I am, Brother Bo. He wasn't my faith. In my mind, I said, my God, how am I going to preach? This baby's died. I got to preach. Wasn't my faith. There was a black national preacher. Grabbed that baby and snatched its clothes off and pulled it into his chest and wrapped both arms around it and raised his face toward heaven and he began to pray. He entered into that third dimension, Brother Bo. He would not let that baby go. He would not let that baby go. And his faith began to overflow on some of us. And we gathered around. And in ten minutes, that baby came back to life because he would not let go. He had that bulldog faith. That third dimension of faith. It wasn't my faith. It was his faith. 
I'm going to tell you one more. I've got a boy in my church, half black, half Japanese. Name's Bobby Wilson. He manages a Burger King. Both assistant managers are black. The man's begged them to go to other cities, take management of other Burger Kings. They won't go, won't leave the church. Bobby had lived for God about 14 years, had a Buddhist mama that hated me and hated God and hated the church. She pulled Bobby's sister and his three brothers out. But Bobby stuck. Well, a couple of years ago, Tomika Wilson got cancer. I'm going to confession's good for the soul, Brother Bo. I said, serves that reprobate heifer right. That's how much faith I had. Serves that reprobate heifer right. I fought her for 13, 14 years hanging on to that boy. And she won four of them back. Serves that reprobate heifer. I hope she suffers. And I hope she goes to hell. You, you forget it. I got a bad spirit. I'm nasty. I'm a nasty old man with a bad spirit. And don't be like me. Be like Brother Bo. Somebody. For God's sake, don't be like me. Now... She got cancer, they operated. She got worse. She went to Irwin Army Hospital. I'm going to make it real short. They had her own, the life support machine. She was clinically dead. Fourteen days in a coma. Fourteen days clinically dead. Bobby come to me. He said, Brother Westberg. He said, they're telling me. They've got to unhook the machine. It's no hope. She's been clinically dead 14 days. He said, what am I going to do? I didn't dare tell him unhook her. I wanted to, Brother Bo. You see how much faith I got. I said, Bobby, it's your decision. Now this is Tamika Wilson's story. She said, I called on Buddha. And Buddha did not answer me. And I called on Jesus. And I came back to life. That's her story. She walked down the aisle, dragging her foot, and stood in an altar of prayer. Two men carried her down into the baptistry. And Tomika Wilson died in peace because the boy would not let go. A boy would not let go. You don't have to be an intellectual to have faith. You don't even have to be a preacher to have faith. All you have to do is enter into that third dimension and get a hold of God and begin to hang on and let the devil shake you and let the devil throw you around. But hang on to God. And you can have revival. You can have anything you want this morning. God has given you a blank check. He said anything that you ask in my name, believe in. Hey, God is chained to His Word. God is chained to His Word. To maintain His credibility in heaven amongst the angels. 
He's got to do what He said He would do. He said to the woman, according to your faith, It don't matter if you've got two. Booker reminded me last night. He preached for me when I had 60. My God, 60 was a crowd. I can remember when I had three. Numbers don't mean anything to God. In fact, it would seem to me in my Poor, misguided, uncalculable understanding. My, my weak, finite stupidity. It seems that God just enjoys taking overwhelming odds and then cramming it down the throat of the devil and say, Look at that! Look at that! Look at that! He loves to do it. It does not matter how insignificant you are. In fact, it might help a whole bunch if you were insignificant because we get so lifted up with our ability and our pride. It might help you if you're insignificant and unknown. That might be, that might be the key to your success. Faith. Oh, faith. I believe in holiness. I seldom preach it because I seldom have to. But when I have to, I do it. Open my, open my front door Sunday morning a few Sundays ago something was stacked up against the front door it was a two by four and on one side perfectly carved letters it was varnished and polished it had Leonard E. Westberg in my title. And on the other side, in letters almost as high as the two by four, it said Headbuster. Headbuster. I'm always trying to say, man, I'll grab me a two by four and I'll walk down through you. I'll bust your kinky heads and your straight heads. It don't make any difference to me which is which. You know, the, 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 the black folks straighten theirs. And the white folks curl theirs. I can't understand it. I can't understand it. Can you, tell, can you straighten that one out? They put that straightener in there. And the white folks are always trying to wind it up and twist it up. Ah, God, I'm going to start clowning in a minute. Oh, listen to me this morning. What do you need from God? Any of you need anything from God? Hey, you can have it. He said anything. When God said anything, He meant anything. He said, if you ask anything, 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 anything in my name, I will do it. I will do it. I will do it. Uh, God, if there wasn't another preacher, I'd give an altar call. How many want something from God? Walk down here and stand right now. You want something from God? Preacher, saint, it don't matter. But you want something from God? Lift your hands and reach up and get a hold of God and enter into that third dimension of faith and believe God. HGR, Holy Ghost Radio, proclaiming the true, unadulterated gospel message for over 10 years. www.holyghostradio.com
www.acts238.com. We are Acts 238.